Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the Righteous Fire changes, specifically for 3.25. Now I will be upfront and say that there are most likely a lot of things that I have missed, primarily because this was a really, really hefty patch. So with that being said, uh, before we get started, I'm going to go over my bingo sheet since I made a bingo sheet. Uh, Gladiator was reworked. Melee totems actually got removed from the game. Fizz taken as X element has been not removed. It's been uh, nerfed heavily. By nerfed, it's been removed from a lot of sources. Bleed got buffed. Corpse skills got nerfed, specifically DD. There is a boat. Uh, Back to basics got nerfed. Adorned got nerfed. Uh, Glad, oh, I think we went with that one. And T7 map mod overhauled, or maps, uh, I think the mods were overhauled slightly. Um, so with that being said, we're going to close out of that and get into the meat and potatoes. So general consensus of my first impressions, early RF is the same. So early RF would primarily be your campaign, um, maybe slightly nerfed mid RF. So maybe like, let's say white maps to yellow maps, slightly nerfed on the, um, I don't know if it's on the defense front, so maybe slight nerf on the damage front. End game RF, so, um, if, well, okay, there's there's two stages here. If we're just talking about standard tier 16 mapping, I think it's virtually the same. If we're talking about like 20, 30, 50, 100 divines, etc., if we carbon copy the build from last league, it's nerfed. So let's talk about that. There's also some a lot of potential for new ways of scaling bringing back some old ascendancies like Juggernaut, and we'll get right on into it. So, the Defiance of Destiny unique amulet now causes you to gain 10 to 20 life instead of 25 to 35. This is a big nerf. However, if your goal is to be pretty much immortal in just, say, T16 maps and stuff, this piece of gear can most likely still provide this for you. It is still an incredibly strong piece because it gives you the life before the damage is dealt, so it's like a pseudo block-based setup. The concern is, if this is still a tier zero drop, I don't want to build the budget character and leave it so that the most expense, like basically all of your survivability comes from this one piece. So we'll talk about this in future videos. I have some potential um, fixes to not needing Defiance of Destiny anymore. That'll be in some later content. The adorned went from a zero, sorry, a a 50 to 150 roll to zero to 100. This is a big nerf to adorned. I am going to try to theorycraft the builds without it. And the primary reason for this is because adorned was already expensive, not very enjoyable to build, homogenizes pretty much all characters to just stack clusters. And more importantly, if the end game version of my build is getting nerfed, I want to try to create somewhere like a like a, a point where you have hit this point. It's not really worth investing more. However, if you want to, here you go. I don't really have that right now, but I feel like this is kind of being a little bit more clear. They did not mention anything about Cloak of Flame, Dawnbreaker, or Lightning Coil. So these are still very much uh, available to us. However, Dawnbreaker... They did make it so if you vol orb shields, you can no longer get fizz taken as corruption. So that is one big thing to note. Okay, so now let's get into all of the other stuff. Archmage was not touched and I'm bothered by it. Let's move on. Call to Arms has been renamed Auto Exertion and now reserves 15% of your mana. This is kind of scary. Um, usually we automated Enduring Cry and Infernal Cry. Uh, which also got changed, by the way. So at the moment, this will not be used in my build anymore. I was speaking a little bit with Captain Lance, and he enlightened me on a little bit of stuff. If I can get through that and, and actually remember, we'll we'll go back to that. So to talk about Enduring Cry, I should have organized this a little bit better. Uh, Enduring Cry uh, now makes it right here. So you essentially no longer gain the instant regeneration. Um, instead, you now gain a percentage of your maximum life regen, and it's scaled based off power, meaning it's not really going to be very good unless you are using it around mobs or a unique mob, etc. So I think Enduring Cry got a regen nerf, 
uh, if not really specced into or set up correctly, right? So this does hurt us at a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's anything crazy. The one thing, well, actually, mm, I, I would say it's a little bit crazy only because I really enjoyed the old setup of utilizing um, automation for this so that whenever it would proc, you get a massive surge of regen on two fronts. Number one, what would happen is before your Enduring Cry would heal you, but it would also make you take less elemental and the less elemental also heals you because you're taking less from your own RF. But anyway, this is something we're going to revisit later because potentially with Warcry power stacking, there's a node now on Chieftain that gives infinite Warcry power. Um, a quick example of that, and then we're going we're gonna to travel back, uh, is this is one of the new nodes. So you get Warcrys have infinite power, which means they're always at max, and you get Warcry buff effect. This is what Captain Lance was talking about. This turns this node into basically... 12%, 13% life regen per second, which is very, very strong. And you can pretty much have 100% uptime, but then you get dicked by the map mod for reduced cooldown recovery. Okay, going back. Um, so we went over Enduring Cry. Infernal Cry no longer covers enemies in Ash. It now has this, it basically focuses more on the combustion aspect, which we did not do anything with. I put a note here that says, I think it still explodes. I don't think it does because I believe, and could be wrong here, I believe that Infernal Cry's Explode was tied to the cover in Ash and it doesn't cover in Ash anymore. This is one of the, I would say the bigger nerfs to RF right now is losing the easy access to cover in Ash. Now, maybe we will get that back later. I'm not really sure. At the moment, there is a potential new node on the tree here, which is called Settling Ash. Unfortunately, you have to stand still for two seconds, and I don't know how long it lasts, and it would also cost our anoint, which is probably worth it, but really depends. Like, two seconds is a lot longer than the Chieftain Ascendancy, which is literally instant. So, I'm not really sure. This is kind of a weird one for me. I'm not a big fan of this change, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, next up. The suffix modifier on weapons that provided increased burning damage and no longer roll. This is a very weird one. I, I'm curious why. Um, in hindsight, this doesn't really affect your super late game RF, which I don't even know if I want to build too much anymore. Um, it should hypothetically make crafting end game RF weapons easier because we're removing quite a few mods out of the pool. Um, I mean, I guess maybe burn damage on scepters, but it doesn't matter because your end game weapon would typically want damage over time multiplier, fire damage over time multiplier, and then usually your third suffix is multi-mod. So that doesn't matter too much, but it does, it is kind of weird in the campaign though, because oftentimes you could identify burning damage scepters, and then you could like regal and craft fire damage, and that's kind of gone. So I don't know how I feel about this one. It's kind of just taking away a little bit of joy of identifying blue items for me. I said this before in the past, when they changed how RF scaling worked originally, I talked about how sad I was that, you know, now you identify a scepter and it's plus one fire gems and that doesn't really do anything for RF anymore. And that's kind of happening to burning damage as well. I feel like the RF archetype is kind of getting pushed out of favor, not intentionally, just like maybe indirectly is the term to use. Let's keep going. Herald of Ash buff no longer grants more spell fire damage. The buff now provides or grants you 15% physical damage as extra fire. Um, this like also really hurts me. I already used Herald of Ash in my builds, even though it was not efficient, because I could justify <laughs> getting the microtransaction. You can skin Herald of Ash for nice, colorful explosions, and the more spell fire worked for Fire Trap, but not for RF. Now it literally just doesn't work. So this is like an MTX nerf, which really makes me sad let's just move on though again this was not really efficient for damage scaling it was just fun uh taste of hate no longer has physical damage taken as cold you don't worry about this anymore now remember if you did not keep up with the the previous spoilers the reason they're removing physical damage taken as x element in this context here is because they're buffing armor across the board on everything uh not to mention i forgot determination has been nerfed determination is now uh, basically 50%, it's half the amount of armor, um, but that's because base items, we now have new tiers of base items above our previous ones, 
And on top of this, because of that, um, they're just naturally going to be stronger and they got a 20% armor, evasion, I think energy shield buff across the board as a multiplier. So that's pretty good. Um, just to confirm here on determination. Determination is now, um, let's see, determination now provide, now provide, oh, that's ruthless. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, determination now provides you and allies gain 90 armor from previously 179 up to 1026, previously 2000. So basically half armor. Okay. Uh, th this one here is, this is kind of like just a question to pose. The only concern I have really with the term on RF Chieftain is assuming I still play around with Cloak of Flame. The term was giving us majority of our armor when we went Cloak of Flame. Now it's going to give half the amount. So that's a little bit weird, but we'll figure this out. You know, that's what I'm here for. So we'll figure it out. Okay. So we talked about a lot of nerfs. It's time for a buff. It's a big buff. It's like the saving grace. Endurance charges on players and minions no longer grant 4% elemental resistance. Have no fear. In Chris Wilson's words, this is a buff. Because they now instead grant 4% additional elemental damage reduction per endurance charge. The reason this is so strong is because when you hit, say, 90 max res it's very hard to still reduce damage. And one would ask, you know, well, why do you want to keep mitigating damage? The answer is because as you go into more difficult content, things are going to hit harder and harder and harder and harder. And you have to understand like map mods and things being possessed by whatever. Wildwood is back. We have all these different things. So this right here is the saving grace. Now, one thing to note is elemental... Uh, additional elemental damage reduction means we out regen our rf more because if we're getting extra elemental reduction we're taking less from rf that means we're healing more on average this is good because chieftain lacked um regeneration in like the early stages the question is is how i'm going to generate endurance charges on a chieftain is something entirely different may just use enduring cry may have to use enduring composure there's like inexorable on the skill tree this will you know leave some room for theory crafting figuring out what we're doing with this however this also brings a ton of love to our boy juggernaut who is located right oops i'm drunk right here juggernaut's unflinching node brings a lot of value to endurance charges there's another interesting about Juggernaut, another interesting thing. Unbreakable has been changed entirely. It no longer provides 8% of your armor protects against uh, elemental damage. Now it's 15% of your armor applies to chaos taken from hits. Now in the past, if anyone played my end game versions of my RF Jug, I went with Fourth Vow. Fourth Vow is 100% of your armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits. Um, so what you would do, what I think you do now is you just do not take this. So you would be taking like untiring, unstoppable, unflinching, and then I will probably take unyielding to bring back some damage, stack endurance charges, right? And then the key to this is a, uh, Legion keystone called divine flesh, which makes it so 50% of your elemental damage is taken as, um, chaos. This allows your juggernaut to get a even stronger unbreakable to roll against the chaos, which is 50% of the damage, but also you have your endurance charges to help mitigate against the elemental that is not being converted over to chaos. Speaking of this, there is another buff that I would like to bring up that is located right here. This is a new section that has been added. Sorry for all the green circles. I do not like this program, Path of Pathing. Uh, I'm used to pathing my own tree, so everything looks messed up here. There is a new section right here. So if, you, if you're familiar with the leveling, right, we come through here, we go like this, and then we come right up here. Now, right over here, we have eight fire res, one max fire res, and two max all res. So that's extremely strong. I'm hoping that on our Chieftain, we can change our tree pathing up, path through here, 
and go block based like our uh, Inquisitor version, if you remember the Inquisitor. Speaking of that, this node got a one max res buff on it too. So Sanctuary is yet again even stronger. I'm hoping that by going block based, we can drop Defiance of Destiny, have enough recovery, and then not have to worry about that, and we can scale more damage on the amulet. Not to mention, as we were talking about before, life mods overall have been buffed. So I believe life mods look like their, their top end is like 20 to 30 higher on every piece of gear. Um, this would work really well in conjunction with this patch because shields can have a higher life roll, amulet, defiance of destiny, right? Not using the amulet and not using a unique shield. So if we're not using, say, Rise of the Phoenix or Dawnbreaker, we get like 150 life roll on the shield, potentially even more. And then if you're not using a Defiance of Destiny, you get a fat life roll on an amulet potentially. So we'll see where this takes us. This is kind of what the, the goal is going to be. A lot of things to figure out, right? Okay. Divine Blessing has been removed from the game. Doesn't really affect us. I just kind of wanted to throw that in there. Uh, Unbreakable, this is the one we just checked. So we use Fourth Val for this, so it's okay. Fix the bug where some vendor recipes could unfracture fractured items. If you guys watched my video on the helical ring crafting, that interaction is probably removed now. 10% of physical damage from its taken as chaos and armor energy shield mastery has been replaced with reduced damage taken from crits. So rip the physical damage taken as X element. The 10% of armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits has been replaced with a mastery that provides reduced effect of curses on you. The life mastery for 50 flat life has been lowered to 30. The Pact with Energy Notable Atlas that causes you to gain Sulfite Intoxication. I do this in all my League Start builds. Uh, you get 35 damage, 35% increased damage, uh, movement speed, and 1 max all res. Um, this now only lasts 60 seconds. It used to be infinite. So kind of sad, but it's okay. New Eldritch Implicit for Body Armors have been added that grant physical damage taken as. So this will be kind of interesting. I don't know if this means we're using an endgame rare body armor, because I would love to. I would love to be able to dip my toes into the new life mods. If this rolls up to like 20% fizz taken as, you know, we ditch Cloak of Flame, we go with like a 2,000 armor body armor, more, 2,800 armor body armor with like 200 life and fizz taken as. This looks very spicy, so I'm excited to see where this takes us. Um, the Long Watch Divination card has been re-enabled and allows you to get 4th Vow. This means SSF RF for 4th Vow RF Jug is log in. The downside, you still have to get a Zabakwa Divine Flesh uh, Legion Keystone. Um, I forgot to put this one in. Um, this one a lot of you guys are going to like. Rolling Magma has been nerfed at level 1. So if we come over here and we search... Rolling Magma has lost 50% damage effectiveness at level 1, which potentially means we could be leveling with a melee skill that a lot of people have been asking for. The downside is that means you're going to have to do a big swap in Act 2 to RF. A an example of some melee gems that were buffed this league because uh, basically all of them did. Sweep. Sweep went from 170% damage effectiveness at level 1 to 289. So, here's an example of some melee buffs, which could potentially just make Act 1 a breeze, and to be honest, if Act 1 is a breeze and Act 2 is pretty good, I'm okay with playing melee, because I, I really do enjoy playing melee. It's just weird going from a fizz build to a hard switch to a fire caster, right? Uh, here's an interesting one. Suffix modifiers on shields that cause you to gain life when you block can no longer roll. I was very concerned about this, but I do believe the modifier I was talking about earlier, Shaper, is recover life on block. I think we're okay. I don't think they would just sneakily remove percent life gain on block on a shield. That's like kind of big, but we'll, we'll see as we go. Combs Heart has received a big buff. It is now 1,000 flat life. Downsides of Combs Heart, I don't know how much armor is on the base. We cannot six link it because it has no sockets. I want to see where we can go with Combs Heart. I just need to see, right? For sure though, what is nice is getting a shit ton of life scales very well 
with life gain on block on our shield, which scales very well with the mitigation of endurance charges, essentially being able to out mitigate the damage, thus resulting in basically the Defiance of Destiny loop, but with your shield. Flesh and Stone is used to be take up to 10% less damage from nearby enemies in Sand Stance, has been buffed all the way up to 19%. We could see us ourselves going back to uh, potential Flesh and Stone. And then this is basically what I was talking about with the block-based chieftain we kind of explained. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. I think that for League starting, RF is still pretty much exactly where it was before. I think it's a great budget map blaster. I'm very excited to see where it goes. I think that I, I don't know how much easier it's going to be to break into T-17s now. They did say T-17s are substantially easier, like 30% less life. Sorry, 30% less damage and 50% less life. So I would like to say that we could probably break into T-17s earlier, although I think the boss damage will still be abysmal. But I think the map clear will be okay. Anyway, only time will tell. Um, tomorrow will be theory crafting a lot. I will try to build this block based version and kind of see where the numbers take us. But anyway, for now, that is pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Sorry if this is coming off a little bit negative. I am actually so freaking excited for the new league that's dropping. The the patch notes are not exactly in my favor, but there's a lot of cool stuff to discover even within the patch notes and the league itself looks amazing. I'm so happy that the, the damn corpses are gone, man. No more corpse crafting. So anyway, that is about it. So hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.